Hi, welcome to this tutorial on creating interactivity in N5 and InDesign. So I'm going to show you some of the new interactive features in version 1.3 of N5. And keep in mind, this is just a subset of the features we've added. So let's take a look at this project. Here I have a uh, prototype. Um, this is something I, as a designer, might produce for a client to take a look at or I might produce it for a developer uh, to show him or her how, uh, how I want the site to function as well as look. So let's start by uh, adding some form elements here. Start with a really simple one. I want the, uh, I've got a rectangle here. I want it to be an input so that uh, uh, the person using the page can uh, set a quantity for the number of t-shirts they want here. So I'm going to, uh, in the Buttons and Forms panel, select Text Field here. And that's ready to go, but um, you're going to see later why I'm doing this. But I'm going to give it a, a nice readable name, Quantity. Um, and then what I want to have for this rectangle is I want it to be a drop-down with all of the color and size options. So in the Buttons and Forms panel this time, I'm going to select combo box and I'm gonna start adding list items here so uh, let's give the purple a fancy name let's call it mauve and it'll be small and I'll click the plus sign to add that and then I'll click I'll do mauve and medium and plus sign to add that and so on uh, adding all the color and size options and that'll be ready to go and then I've created a, um, a sample cart page here. And so what I want to do so that I can navigate to this page uh, when somebody uh, clicks Add to Cart is I want to make sure I'm on this page, first of all. And I'm going to go to the, book, the Bookmarks panel and create a new bookmark. And I'll just call that Full Cart. And I'm going to go up, back up to the Add to Cart here. And in the Buttons and Forms panel, I want to convert that to a button. And I'll just call it Add to Cart. And I'll use the default event of On Release or Tap. And I'm going to add the action uh, to go to a destination. And in this case, I want that destination to be the full cart. So, uh, so we'll have this piece working there. And uh, I'll show you another uh, form element select these. I want these to be part of a survey. It's going to ma make each of these circles a radio button. And then we're going to hold off on this vote button for just a minute um, because it's based on a multi-state object. And I'll show you a simpler version of a, a multi-state object first. So this t-shirt actually has three different states because we want the uh, the user to be able to hover over these three different colors and to see it change on the t-shirt. So when I select this in the object states panel you can see there are three different name states here. It's purple, blue, and yellow and that'll actually change the color of that. Um, and I've named this item so that it's uh, it's clear uh, what that state is related to. So let's go ahead and create a brand new multi-state object. Um, here I've got these items all grouped together, which is the first step. I've got three tabs and some text here. And so I'm going to, in the Object States panel, I'm going to click the New button to create a new state. And I'll create the state for reviews. And, um, you know, I might also create the, the specification state right now. And, you know, if I want to go back and rename the first one, I just triple click on it. It's a little bit tricky. Let's see. One, two, three. There, I got it. Call it description. And I'm going to go to the review state and I'll just show you how, how I edit these. So I want the uh, double click to get in there. I want the description tab to uh, look like it's been deselected. And so I'm just going to grab that gray. And I want the Reviews tab to look like it's selected. So I'm going to go up and get the paper color. So now it looks like that's selected. I'm going to go in here and just 
edit the text and say something like no reviews yet be the first to review and might add an underline to that and just make sure it says two in there be the first to review and so that's the that's the beginning of that and then I would do the same thing with the specifications tab and I'll show you how in this particular example how I get that working I'm going to select the rectangle tool and make sure I have uh, no stroke or fill uh, I'm gonna go and get kinda out of that this button allows me to flip between the go back out to the object state so actually really I want I want nothing selected so I can even hit command shift a just to make sure absolutely nothing selected although it still seems to be for some reason that won't hurt so I'll just draw my rectangle and oops I want that to have no fill and no stroke and I'm gonna convert this to a button as well and I'll just call it description underscore BTN and I'm going to add the action that I want it to go to a state and I'll choose Oh, I didn't name my multi-state object that's what gets confusing so uh, let me go back here and select select the multi-state object and I'm gonna go back to the just make sure it's on the first tab so I want this to be product info this is why these should all have clear names because when if I locate my button, my invisible button, which is a little tricky. There it is. Um, now I can actually see product info. Okay, much easier to find. And I want that to go to description. And then for each of these, I could hold the Alt or Option key and Shift to constrain the sliding and let go of that. And so now I've got that button there. And that one's going to go to the reviews. So I call it reviews underscore BTN and change the action to go to reviews and then I can do the same thing with specifications so you get the idea there and then I'll show you another thing here I've got kind of a hidden multi-state object I click on that um, you can see where it is but what I've done with the first state is to give it no stroke and no fill and I've collapsed it down so it's just a sliver there and if I go to the second state you can see that there's uh, actually a, uh, a mock uh, results uh, screen there. It shows you survey results. So let me go back to the first page there, or first state, excuse me. And I'm going to convert this, this vote rectangle to a button. I'll call it vote underscore BTN. And I want that also to go to a state. And I want that to take the vote results and go to the result state. So that's all pretty cool. Uh, let's also take a look at how the t-shirt's gonna work before I uh, do the Julia Childs thing and switch over and show you the, uh, the roast that I've already got baking in the oven. So here uh, I'll take this uh, purple swatch and convert this into a button and I'll just call it shirt one and I'm gonna put that on rollover actually and I can I have a in the completed document I have a click in there so it'll work well on uh, touch devices as well so in this case I'll just show the rollover since we've done the click so that's gonna go to a state and I want to take the item itself and go to purple there and for blue I'm gonna create that create a button out of that swatch call it shirt 2 and use the rollover event and I want to go to state and that's the item I want to go to blue so that'll work and then we'll just add that to the yellow and uh, you know when this is all done all I have to do is go up to file and say export HTML5 within 5 I'll say yes the dialog will come up and then I will just click OK to run but in this case, I've added a bunch of other interactivity, and I'm just going to show you the final result. So here it is. Uh, if you you can see, I hover over these swatches, and I've got the different T-shirt colors. Um, 
I've got the survey here, so I can choose an option. I click vote. It'll show me those mock results. Uh, the tabs on the bottom here are all working. And uh, I'll show you a couple other things I have set up in the file. So uh, the cart, if you click on it and it's empty, it'll say uh, no item is in your cart. Of course, um, that just assumes it's empty because you're clicking on it there. Uh, but if you were to you know, say you can add a quantity here, you can click Add to Cart, and that'll take you to the order page. And um, in the search field, I've got this hooked up. So you could do kind of a pretend search and click the button here, and you get search results. And also, oops, yeah, let's flip back over there. It's kind of hiding at the bottom. Let me make a little room by getting rid of the navigation bar there. Uh, if you click Live Help, it opens up a little chat box. And I can actually you know, type something in here, like, does this come in extra large? And I can hit Submit, and it'll tell me that query's been sent. That's just another object state. And I can close that. So as you can see, there's a, a whole lot of interactivity you can add using just the built-in features of InDesign and exporting with In5 version 1.3 or higher. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you create with this, and thanks so much for watching.